groups giving money to agencies, and that even take money away from from the day by day that this entrepreneurs we support are doing. At the time after September 11th, I wasn't on board with the foundation. The foundation has made a series of unrestricted grants to all the time that I figuring that all of the rush to uh, support the Japanese cotton emerging funds would perhaps, especially if it kind of happened right at the time of the year. The full funding here was just fine, but I'll hurt the Silicon Valley for an issue that would be pretty fine to the cross or to the Japanese foundation, which is tempted to the Silicon Valley and see. I, I just don't know that there is a to the question of how can it be fair that only three organizations can access the money? The, the downside of that that we could give, you know, just to give all the good ones. Eventually, you have to say, we're going to get to have the potential to order some of these cards. And we're not going to be, you can see this in some of your other we're not going to be deterred from that group by becoming emotionally involved in every story that comes through our door. They are great stories. They're great social entrepreneurs. They're doing work. People need to support someone. It's very intense. You know, they, you can know what the criteria are. You can see question by question how these criteria play out in their application. You can send us your letter. Uh, you can know that we're not really meeting. I mean, we'll deny everybody a chance to come and meet with us in an application. And we're not secretly meeting with some of them and not meeting with others. It's, it's as level a playing field as we can make it. And, and that's all you can do. I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think you can really, I don't think a disappointed applicant ever goes away of saying, you know, I really didn't think that's a good idea. Um, you can at least have treated them with courtesy. You can have treated them with respect. So, Yeah, um, sustainability is, um, is, is one of the criteria that this work should be sustainable. It should have any sort of funding forever. And we generally would, would um, be amenable to renewing the three years now because we three years. Because we know that you know, how an organization grows is not like this. It's like this. And the organizational infrastructure actually has to be put in place before the program can catch up to it. So we see ourselves as giving that boost so that you can put the infrastructure in place that you need to have the resources to get your impact to the point where they would be commensurate with that overhead. And to us that seems like a very valuable role, but it's a gamble in some ways because you could put the infrastructure in place and then the, the program and the impact wouldn't follow. Now, when you're working with social entrepreneurs, one of the beauties of that as a, as a way of working is that you can say, you can have it as a selection criterion as opposed to my personal responsibility. One of the things that, that a social entrepreneur has to do to get in the door at the school foundation is make a convincing argument that they have a sustainability plan and what is it and why do you think these resources will be available to you and what other experiences with other social entrepreneurs have you looked at to, to show you that this is, that this is true. Uh, with impact, we accept uh, applications only at the point where the theory has changed. That's the term normal. Only at the point where the theory of change has already been demonstrated, start to finish, in one place. It's actually used to find the theory of change. Okay, a theory of change is a sequence of cause and effect statements that lead from program input to outcome to impact. So the theory of change says that starts with the problem or the issue. There is a theory about what kinds of input will cause that problem to move. It is very well developed. Um, you know, the obvious simple theory of change is head hurts, take aspirin, aspirin makes head feel better. Theory of change. You know, in, in the world of, of uh, 
I mean, I tell you that the Seoul Foundation's theory of change is more social entrepreneurs solving more problems in the world because we enable some of them to register and act up, and we enable many of them to become more organized and to inspire others. That's our theory of change. Um, so, so let's say that the theory of change of the of the um, Let's say that the theory of change for this part is ending poverty in African countries in the is, is, is reducing poverty in African countries by giving rural residents the means to increase their income. And in Kenya, they pretty much took that, that a $90 loan can increase a farmer's income by thousand dollars a year. And the farmers having having been demonstrated that outcome will in fact put their own resources into buying the farm. And that their income in fact does increase by thousand dollars a year and that the GDP of Kenya has done up by zero percent as a result. So okay, so then we can support them to, to begin to apply that model in other countries. It's a proven model. Theory of change works start to finish. Um, if they had come to us at the point when they had only invented the pump and said, we know, we just know that if we put this pump in the hands of 30,000 farmers, the GDP of Kenya will go up to 2%, you know, 2%. We would have said, you know, can you done that? Come back. So, so that's so for us, you know, impact is something that we already had to have demonstrated some facility with at some reasonable scale before you even come in the door. So we're betting that if you know how to achieve impact in one place, and if you have a good solid strategy, not just a hope, but you need impact in another one what you learned in the first place, that you're a good bet for us. No. I mean maybe before my remarks, maybe not. Um, we'll know if that actually works. But we'll know along the way whether all of our grantees are achieving the benchmark that they set for themselves in their business plan to indicate that they're making progress for them. And the same with the same building plan. There are financial goals. We'll ask them on an annual basis if they're making And, and you know, the problem is the kickstart has in fact, with its sustainability model, and we are helping fund them to work on it, is that so far the value the value proposition is not profitable without philanthropic uh, intervention. The the model of the, the model of it, the pump only costs ninety dollars, and it only costs ninety dollars to do it. So that's more or less. So the pump, so the farmer can afford the pump. But the marketing system, how you get that, how you get the technician out into the field to demonstrate the pump, to deliver the pump, to install the pump, to help the farmer develop his capability to use it, that brings the total cost of the pump to about $230, 240 something like that. And so the farmer can't afford $240. Yeah, yeah. So, so the total, the total package, start to finish, of getting this pump into a farmer's hand is more than the market would bear. So, so Kickstart is still working. Uh, they can show that their poverty reduction model works, and the business model should be possible. I mean, you know, you look at, you look at those pieces, and, and, and you figure out that, that yeah, we can, there's a little bit more technical intervention, and we can more expert help with some other they, I mean, the difference between $90 and $200 for poverty and income quality in the farmer's hand is not so great that it can be solved. So that's where the school foundation comes in. Three years, and then three more years while you work on this until the end of the month. Yes? Can you tell me more about the internal compass? And I see you speak to it. What does that mean? Is there an emotional, physical? What response do you get at that? How do you navigate? What it has meant for me in my career, because I have been largely associated with large U.S.-based organizations, um, the Nature Conservancy of the World War II, the U.S. Agency for International Development, getting their results. 
result by providing funding and other support to organizations that are indigenous countries. And the, the awakening that I have, and then this comes back to my society, I've been to the other side of the other slide to them. When I went into the field, when I was actually there, you know, with the Colombians, with the Mexicans, with the Uganda, working on their projects, the after five, working on their projects day by day, I learned that a great deal of their difficulty was in complying with the regulations and the restrictions and sometimes the outright interference of their U.S. partners. So, so when I talk about, I mean, when I talk about what, the, what, what my internal compass does need to do, what it is to me is that very early on, I made a decision that I'm on the side of this. And um, that means that if you have to stand up in your organization and you say, you know, can or I know that this isn't quite ready, but let's not bother them anymore. Let's take a leap of faith. Or you can you can say this this is a colleague. Sometimes you do have to say this colleague is a choice. This colleague is making life impossible. Or on the other hand, you can say this colleague is a saint. And even though she's taking a whole bunch of Things she shouldn't have to take for doing what she feels is right on the internet. So, so what it says for me is going into the field and saying, okay, this is about the World Bank form that has to be filled out. I personally can't get them to wait for some food, but I can sit with you and in two days we can fill it out in the minimum way to run it. You'll get a letter you're not going to take it out. So you take, um, you think, is, is there um, doing the good stuff. And, and you stand for the sound if, if there is a conflict. There's not always a conflict. Even in the world bank, there are wonderful, big-hearted people. Everywhere there are wonderful, big-hearted ones. Everywhere there are churches. I mean, you know, sorry, guys, the nonprofit sector is not creative. But, but you basically remember every day what it is that you to do. You don't spend your social capital on stupid and necessary battles or um, you know, if somebody has to travel to make a meeting, you know, if, if, if an organization that I'm interested in San in Francisco, I go to San Francisco. I don't pay if you can come to Palo Alto. So there's this, there's, at a trivial level to the great grand level, you, you work in, I, my work to make, to be of service to the people who are really, literally, kind of like the artist life on the line every day. You know, I can jolly well imagine them to so. So it's all good. And how do you use that to navigate your career? Um, I've been fired a couple of times. <laughs> and, um, So, so choosing, choosing to do where I, I could be, you know, where, where everything is in line, or whether, or sometimes to do a job where I felt like, you know what, someone needs to take the course and it's not going to be fatal to me, I can do it. Um, it. It's come back to me. I mean, you know, there, there are many, there are very nice, compelling jobs that have come to me from somebody that I helped with. But you know, I, I think for our grantees, and I would say the same for the work of grantees. Um, you know, here, here's last year we made these three year grants for the cycle, and they say, you know, what is it that will make you happy as a as a funder? How can we, you know, really increase the getting And I think that you know what? Better than I. What well, place of this money? Most of the people who connect us, we have to be. And at this moment in time, in the Young Foundation, 
Um, that's probably the best advice in terms of how to be successful enough that you'll be attractive enough to be funded again. But you know, above all else, think about this as something that we hope will continue, but maybe it won't. And three years from now, whether it is or whether it's not, you're going to say, I did what I wanted to do. Here in the room. So we saw this guy up here, Jack Cole. He's got this vision for you know, what he thinks is right in the world. Um, it's like living with, or we're a living donor who can have a tendency to decline. You know, you sort of like what he said in fact, um, what are the challenges there? This is really harsh, but you kind of have a sense of truth, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, would it would be easier if he wasn't there. <laughs> well, since I'm 13 years old, I live a long and happy life. And, you know, I, I worked with, Jeff is a living donor who is much involved with us in the Skull Foundation. Previous to the Skull Foundation, I worked for the Packard Foundation, which in, in which we had not them, but their children, who were basically very much uh, involved in, in running the, the program. Some of the foundations that I worked for on the East Coast, and more typically on the East Coast, have passed from being run by the original family to being run by a board of trustees. Boards of trustees can be just as difficult as a living donor, uh, which is not to say that that's difficult, because uh, one of the things that's good about, about working for the school foundation in particular is that Jeff's vision is quite broad. And he actually doesn't engage in a day-to-day -day basis on a specific interpretation of it. But he'll, he'll say, huh, this is kind of not what I thought I was going to get. Tell me why you thought it was a thing. And, you know, he, he actually is open to, oh, okay, I can see that he's uh, Yeah, and, and we sort of had that experience back in 2005. So, a person was, we didn't recommend it to them. And we learned something from, uh, from, from their consistent life, both about the ones that they liked and about the ones that they, they had no other question of. Um, I would say that stereotypically of, of a maintenance board of trustees, the board um, is, and that challenges the rest of the staff engage at the level of how best to put that vision into the process. And to get to the thing that is, is social entrepreneurs have become so fashionable and so well supported that there really wasn't much of a need for us to support them in the way that we do now, but that maybe there would be other ways that we could be more well, well, that's another, that's another uh, line of inquiry. But, um, so, so working with a living donor, or working with the heirs of a living donor, means that you do have to work all the time. And I suppose I can imagine living donors, and I actually know of one, not from personal experience, who, who suddenly do get a vision that is completely different from what they've done up to that point. But even in terms of the philanthropy, of course, um, you don't usually move at that kind of speed. We often have multi year commitments to our grantees. Uh, we often Remember, 
Yeah, there's lots of ways to run an ad making process. These sites came on board. The Store Foundation had already decided that it wanted to have an open, competitive applicant. In fact, they first hired me as a consultant. I've been running all kinds of projects with other foundations. Um, in, in line with the Store Foundation theory of change, what I posted about, about the power of story and inspiration, the first requirement to be a grantee of the Skull Foundation is that you be able to tell us your story through a written application process in such a way that we will see how you match with our criteria. So we actually, I should say this carefully, because we do actually have a network of referrers. We, we call on each other, we call on Schwab, we call on our partners in, in Asia and, and, and Global Green Grants to, to, to refer to us extraordinary social entrepreneurs out of their portfolio. But um, essentially, if you can't tell us your story, um, you know, you're going to have trouble telling other people your story too. So, so that, that really is the first thing that we look for. There are six criteria. They're on the website. The, the application process is, is, is actually eight questions because there's a couple of criteria that are but those questions are actually each one about one of the six criteria. Program officers read the letter, um, score it as a match on each of the criteria. Everyone that reaches a certain level of, of score gets considered in a semi-finalist round when we're all sitting around the table talking about it. At that point, we call on our colleagues who have, we have people that, that give references and, and so forth. And then uh, in final stages where we are now, we actually did it. So that's, that's the process. Um, evaluation, I could ask this question because we're only on a second cycle. These are two year grants. The first annual report on the first grants are not really even going to be due until the middle of next year. Uh, we have the kind of grants that we give, we call it course support. It is to the extent legally possible unrestricted support to the organization. We believe that the social entrepreneur knows where is the most powerful place to put free money. But we do have negotiated objectives. So at the time we're making the grant, we say, what do you expect to achieve over the three years and in the long term? And what would you expect to be the benchmark for achieving those things? So we do ask them to report on those benchmarks. And this year, we always do everything two or three years before we're ready. This year, we're actually going to try to standardize. I mean, last year they were all just according to the social entrepreneur. This year we're going to try to say one of those objectives has to be about the number of beneficiaries. One of those objectives has to be about the capacity for the organization to get some control. Actually, need to um, to build your network as, as early on. Name of the volunteers. 
school funds, which is still a supporting organization of committee foundations for Hunt Valley, and the school foundation. They are both administered seamlessly by one staff here in Palo Alto. We have a plan endowment of about $500 million, and we make about $25 million in grants each year. Uh, the mission of the school foundation is to empower communities around the world by investing in, connecting, and celebrating social entrepreneurs. Um, that was question number one. Question number two, the foundation's definition and approach to social entrepreneurship. The, the lovely thing about this is that anything you want to know more about, you can find on our website. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time just telling you things that are there on the website. I'm going to read you two paragraphs. Social entrepreneurs see opportunities where others see problems or crises. They apply innovative solutions to social and environmental issues, empowering people and communities to vision and create positive change. They work in many kinds of organizations, nonprofits, social purpose centers such as community development banks, and hybrid organizations that mix elements of nonprofit and for profit organizations. The school foundation believes that social entrepreneurs represent a powerful force for systemic social change. Their work has the potential to reduce enough economic disparities, increase opportunities for the disadvantaged, promote healthy communities, and increase the interpersonal and intercultural understanding of the foundations for world peace. That's it. That's social entrepreneurship. Um, the approach of the Soul Foundation to supporting social entrepreneurs has three prongs. Those three prongs are called invest, next, Again, lots and lots of detail on the website. I'm going to skip invest because that's what I work on. Uh, it basically involves making grants in support of social entrepreneurs who actually do their social entrepreneur work. I'll come back to that at the end. Connect is about creating a community of social entrepreneurs who can leverage their power by uh, learning from each other, sharing their knowledge, and banding together to tackle uh, social and environmental problems in a more complex way than individual organizations can tackle them alone. Some of the ways uh, that the Shock University to bring together legal entrepreneurs and leading academic issues. Social ed, which I'm afraid might have a lot more than I can, is an for social entrepreneurs and it's by us to use those kinds of stuff. And we have just recently hired a new right edge, so there will be some things that are quite different. Uh, working places about the nonprofit sector. Mm-hmm. Essentially, open community like eBay was a social edge is a community for social nerds. The new year. The argument is made in two ways. It is a big change, really good problem, so the partnerships we needed to do that. The more important is inspire it. Well, if you make a difference in their own today, aha, maybe that can be different. That's what uh, other efforts to celebrate social work out is let's let the world know that what we have are some opportunities and something that at the right time we make and have resources we can actually solve. So there is a change. And so I told you I would come back to in depth. Um, we have three grant nations, one a signature goal award recognizes some very different We also have grants that support building the field, partnership, and a specific program dedicated to social entrepreneurship as well. Who are the social entrepreneurs? You're meeting on the IM scale, looking from the list of speakers and people that this support. I, I actually probably could recite this for a minute, but I know I'm really on the cut up. The goal of the is pilot grants, and people, and many of these you will know, and it's had these concepts of foundation in fact. A, a year ago, August, we had our local entrepreneurs to apply for the school awards. And uh, we made 13 awards that were awarded for at Oxford at the end of March last year. Afrotech, now known as Kickstart, um, the Social Work and Research Bank, Bunker Roy in India, CAMFED and Cotton um, Support Education Africa. Both Eric Schwartz is a program of involving parents and community leaders as training but helping the kids to improve their high school performance and their chances for graduation. Information CDI 